Today, I'm going to demonstrate live why the hype and fear around AI replacing software engineers is nothing but unfounded fear-mongering and plain silly. I'll use a simple example just to show you how easy it is to prove that current LLMs cannot replace developers who actually know their stuff. Ok, here we go. I'll start with ChatGPT. Again, this example is deliberately simple to keep the length of this video within reasonable time limits. I could bring up more sophisticated ones, but let's cut to the chase. So I'll ask ChatGPT to write us a simple for loop in C++. Show me an example of a for loop in C++. By the way, I'm using GPT-40, but it doesn't truly matter. The behavior I'm gonna point out can be reproduced with any other version. And here's the answer. We've got our for loop, nicely formatted code, and the explanation. However, there is a glaring mistake usually made by beginners. If you see it, fine. If not, no problem. We'll come back and discuss it in detail a bit later. Now, let me repeat this experiment using Cloud AI. I copy the prompt and switch over to Cloud. Cloud, in my opinion, has always been superior to ChatGPT when it comes to code correctness. So, I'll use the very same prompt and let's see. The code is almost the same as ChatGPT's version, including the problem. Now, to understand the problem, let's switch to VS Code. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. So, I've gone ahead and prepared a demo to highlight the issue with the code generated by both ChatGPT and Claude. The code starts with the necessary includes, the usual IO stream, we'll use the vector, and I've included Chrono for our high precision timing measurements and IOMANIP for pretty printing our numbers. The demonstrate behavior template function is going to show us exactly what's happening with our iterators. Here we're creating two iterators pointing to the start of our vector, IT1 and IT2. The code emits logs so we can see what's happening. First, we print out that we're using the postfix increment operator, and then the initial value of the iterator. I used the same plus plus operator we saw earlier in the code snippet generated by ChatGPT and Claude. So here you can see the plus plus operator comes after the for loop counter i. And here we're using it the same way. This operator is called a postfix because it appears after the variable's name it increments. Next I do something seemingly weird. First, I dereference the postfix result variable at line 20 and print it to the console. This variable contains the value returned by the post increment operator at line 19. Then I print the value of the iterator itself. Why am I doing this? You'll see in an instant, but let me introduce another increment operator, the prefix increment operator. In contrast to the postfix operator, the prefix appears before the variable or iterator it increments. Also in this case, I print out the operation we're executing, prefix increment and the initial value of the iterator at line 26. After that, I increment the second iterator using the prefix increment operator. And finally, I print the value returned immediately after incrementing the iterator, and then the value of the iterator itself. Basically, we're using two operators to do the same thing. Increment the operator. Line 19 increments IT1, and line 28 is where we increment iterator 2. You might think, 
Why does C++ offer two different operators for the same purpose? Now there's a subtle difference. Let me show you. In the main function, we pass a vector containing a few integers to our function. Now let's see what happens if I execute this code. Let's take a closer look at the postfix iterator's output. Notice something weird? The value returned right after incrementing the iterator and stored in the postfix result variable is 1, not 2. Yet the value of the iterator in the next line is 2 as we expected. On the other hand, the prefix operator acts as we expected. The logs show the value 2 in both cases. This is not an error, it's normal behavior. And it also explains the subtle difference between the prefix and the postfix increment operator. I've prepared another project where I implemented a custom iterator. So this is our custom postfix increment operator. The postfix operator does not return the incremented value right away. Instead, it keeps track of its old position, then moves forward and returns the old position. This involves creating a temporary copy of the iterator at line 27. So that's why postfix result and the iterator have different values in our original project. So postfix result gets assigned the value of it1++, whereas it1, the value of the iterator, is displayed at line 21. And these are different values. Although this behavior may be useful in certain cases, it's usually not what we need in a simple for loop. In 99% of cases, we won't use the value returned immediately after executing the post increment operator. Thus, the extra work of creating and returning a temporary copy of the iterator gets wasted. The prefix operator does not work this way. Let's go back to our example. So this is the custom prefix operator. It simply increments the iterator and returns the new value immediately. So no temporary copies, no extra steps. But does this extra work actually matter? Let's find out with some actual numbers. I've also prepared a small utility function that can measure execution times with great accuracy. This is our measure performance function. I'm using the high resolution clock from the Chrono library. It's like a super precise stopwatch. The function takes the size of the vector used for testing as input argument. We then initialize the vector and time both operators doing the exact same job millions of times. We calculate the difference between starting and completing both loops. The results are then converted to a user-friendly format. Now let's call this function from our main function. Measure performance. Let's run our performance test with say 100 million iterations. That's quite a lot. Save it and run it. And here are our performance measurements. As you can see, postfix is consistently slower. Not by a huge amount, but when you are doing millions of operations, those microseconds add up. Plus, we are creating all those extra copies just to throw them away. What a waste of CPU time. It only takes using the right operator to avoid these problems. In performance-critical code, even such minor optimization can make a world of difference. So, why did ChatGPT and Claude suggest the postfix increment operator? I don't know for sure, but I believe they were trained on suboptimal or, I say it as it is, low-quality code. Companies with strong quality controls don't usually make their codebase public. Even if they do, there are restrictions on its usage. So LLMs are probably trained using freely available code. And as the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. Now, 
Even this overly simplified example shows why AI-generated code cannot be trusted. But AI in general, without a doubt, can be a fantastic productivity booster in the hands of experienced engineers. However, mixing AI with reduced headcount, less experienced staff, increased workloads, and skipping quality, performance, and security checks makes the future of software development look pretty rough. Companies will soon realize that AI cannot replace actual expertise. Now, check out my video about how virtual functions work in C++. You'll love it. Cheers.